Imagine one day when a robot taxi from Zooks is ready, how exactly you gonna say, I will Zooks home after six, or I will Zooks my kids to school. Well, as you might have understood, today I'm going to discuss a new robo vehicle from Zooks, and I will compare it with Cruise a region where possible. Interested? Subscribe to my YouTube channel and I will share my thoughts on it. Bakunin live. Michael Bakunin here and you are watching my YouTube channel about self-driving and electric vehicles. And you may be asking yourself the same question again and again, why on my YouTube channel I am actually bundling self-driving technology and electric vehicles. Well, I need to say from day one I've been a very strong believer that those technologies EV and AV will come together hand in hand. Tesla is a great example here, but also vehicles from Zooks and Cruise, which we are going to discuss today. Before I really start, let's make one thing absolutely clear. Those are not regular vehicles. They don't even have a steering wheel and paddles. Those cars are uniquely designed around riders, not drivers. No surprise that actually Zooks and Crews are not even disclosing technical details which are so common for regular vehicles. There is no torque, acceleration, nor driving range. What matters for you as a passenger is actually something else. It is the price, the uptime, and the convenience of use. Nevertheless, let me try to compare those uh, cars technically where possible. But before I go there, I want to give a huge credit to the Zooks team. They are not only developing the self-driving technology, which is a huge, very expensive and lengthy task, but they are also developing a vehicle and a ride-hailing app from scratch. As a cyclist, I'm very happy to see sliding doors on those vehicles, very safe, thumbs up both companies. Uh, Zoox has no front or back, it's a bi-directional vehicle, it can go either way or direction, which is making pickups and drop-offs very easy and simple. Both cars will have flat floors, in terms of number of seats, it's gonna be four for Zooks and it's gonna be six uh, for Cruise A region. Well, we know that on average, um, if you look at ride hailing companies, you need less than two seats. Uh, so that's the number of um, passenger per ride. But in some age cases, occasionally you would need more seats. And I'm talking right now about my family with three kids. So definitely when I need to travel with my entire family, uh, take a ride to an airport, for instance, my choice will be Cruise A region. In terms of sensor sets, both companies are using a similar approach. Both Zooks and Cruise are using cameras, lidars, and radars. When it comes to uh, California's self-driving cars reports, everyone just hates them. But information is actually available and I've done my homework here. So right now on the screen you can see the comparison and uh, the, the conclusion is simple. Zooks has driven less autonomous uh, miles in California in 2019 and the disengagement rate was a little bit higher. There is a much more controversy in those numbers and I don't want to go deep and criticize the reports. Uh, does the report really mean that uh, or translate uh, into better or more advanced uh, self-driving system? No, I wouldn't go that far. When a company such as Waymo, for example, is talking about self-driving cars and they're taking an off-the-shelf solution, they need to think and retrofit the vehicles to make sure they have redundancies when they remove a safety driver. Both companies, Cruise and Zooks, has an advantage here. They're building a car from scratch, which means they can and actually built in redundancies from day one. And we know that on Zooks we will have dual motors and two battery packs. No doubt Cruiser region will have redundancies built in such as sensing, compute, networking and power.
all those senses for self-driving actually require a lot of energy. I will try to make a couple of assumptions here, don't quote me on that, but I will try to predict a driving range for both vehicles. So we know that uh, Zoox will have a 133 kilowatt hour battery pack and we know that Zoox wants those cars to be on the road 16 hours per day. My assumption will be that uh, all those systems and sensors and computers will uh, consume two, 2 kilowatts can continuously and after 16 hours of use on each day uh, we'll leave uh, the car with 100 kilowatt hour battery which is a very good capacity but the use case the use cycle is also very different to normal passenger car you will have a lot of stop and go uh, doors opening very wide uh, so you will need to have your climate uh, heaters uh, working very hard. My assumption here that for Zoox the driving range will be between 300 and 350 miles. Cruise is not really disclosing the battery pack size here, but we know that they will be utilizing the Altium technology from General Motors and we know the battery pack sizes uh, will range from uh, 50 kilowatt hours up to 200. So I would say given the vehicle platform size also it's going to seat more passengers six versus four, I would assume that General Motors will be using a battery pack of uh, let's say 150 kilowatt hours and we will probably never know the real size of the battery pack but at least they have the full flexibility to utilize the technology from General Motors. Whenever we talk about charging for robotaxis, I am always amazed by the fact that you will need a human being involved to plug in the gun and charge the vehicle. So how ridiculous it is when you have a robo vehicle, you've solved all the complex issues on the road, but when you go back to your charging facility, you still need to utilize porters and human beings. And that's actually something Zooks was able to fix. They will have a hands-free charging. This is really good news, that's a big advantage here. We don't see these announcements from Cruza region. I think they should be working on it, but if you go back to the Altium battery technology, the only thing I can uh, actually try to conclude here, the maximum charging power, DC charging power, will be probably 200 kilowatts and the voltage on their system will be 4 Hundred. But when you're talking about the life cycle of the vehicle, I give thumbs up to Cruza region here. They've been able to announce that the vehicle will support 1 million miles and all interior components are actually replaceable. This is a very important point for any taxi business, especially robo taxi business, because here you talk about cost per mile. And we'll touch upon that in the separate section, which is called pricing. Both cars will support highway driving and I think this is very important for the taxi business because many rides will be between airports and city center. Thumbs up, well done, good choice. Uh, when we look at the powertrain, on Zoox it's a dual motor, all-wheel drive, four-wheel steering, very good choice. On Cruiser Region it looks like a three-wheel drive and maybe one motor. So here uh, I don't know really the answer, but in terms of redundancies I would definitely choose the Zoox vehicle. I would love to have two electric motors on my car just in terms of safety and security. To determine a price for these vehicles is a very, very challenging uh, exercise, even for the insiders, for people working at Cruise and working at Zooks. And the key uh, question here, whether or not you need to amortize the entry ticket, the upfront investment, and it's huge. We are talking billions of dollars here. So imagine you spend this amount of money and if you want to include the depreciation of this cost on your vehicle and try to amortize it, I think it's going to be a nightmare. So definitely I'm not going uh, and I'm not trying to guess the vehicle price here, uh, but what I need to say, and that's very important, you need to have your car 
running all the time. So 95% of the time, maybe not feasible, but what Zoox is announcing, it's 16 hours per day. I think it's a very good benchmark and it's probably the only way to amortize the uh, upfront cost, the vehicle cost. Uh, if you just uh, exclude the upfront investment, I think there was one of the announcements from Cruiser region when they said the price will be about a half what it takes uh, to build an electric SUV. Uh, I may agree with this approach, but uh, I think the most important part of this vehicle is the self-driving technology and also the life cycle. So when you want to compete with the right hailing networks such as Uber and Lyft, you need to come up with the price which is competitive and ideally you need to come and decrease the price and make it more affordable for your riders. In this case, the life cycle is the key and I'm glad to see that Cruiser region and the cruise team is working on it and they are trying to extend the life cycle of this vehicle to 1 million miles. This is how you amortize the upfront investment, you amortize the vehicle cost and you make this vehicle and your rides more affordable. When we can actually expect those vehicles on the public roads? This is a very good question and both companies will be testing their vehicles on private roads first, such as uh, GM and Honda facilities for a cruise, because currently FMVSS doesn't really allow to operate those vehicles without steering wheels and pedals on public roads. We have one exception here in California, the company called Neuro. They received an exemption, but their vehicle R2 is designed to deliver goods, not people. So Cruz and Zooks will be filing an exemption petition with the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, NHTSA, seeking regulatory approval for its deployment. We know Zooks is testing in Las Vegas, in San Francisco, Cruz is also testing here in San Francisco, maybe at other facilities as well, but I would not really expect to see those cars on public roads in 2021. The Zoox vehicle clearly has some advantages here. It's a bi-directional driving, four-wheel steering, an impressive 133 kilowatt hour battery pack, but also the hands-free charging, it's super important. When it comes to cruise, obviously the 1 million miles life expectancy is a big, big advantage, but also the association with the car makers. This will help them to scale up quicker and actually bypass all those teething problems that trying to set up the uh, f any facility to produce and mass produce uh, robo vehicles. So that said, my clear advice to Zooks will be to find a manufacturing partner. It could be a car maker, but it also can be a company such as Magna Steyr, which is a tier one supplier or a quasi manufacturer, if you wish. So if you partner, they can actually also minimize the number of uh, early stage teething problems. If you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you next week.